You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, welcome to another awesome episode of Ask It Drone You. My name is Paul. And my name is Rob, and this is episode number 573. Thanks for being with us. Appreciate it. Hope you're having a great day. We know you're having a great day because if you're flying today, you are having a great day. Right, Rob? Yeah, so hopefully you're flying or you're going to fly. You also, have something to look forward to. If you find that you're making a video and you need some extra elements, some extra assets, because maybe it's just not right where you want it, you want a little bit of extra production dust to get that perceived value, well, check out our friends at videoblocks.com forward slash drone you. Because right now, for seven days, you can download whatever you need in their subscription based website when it comes to copyright free video, copyright free audio and maybe even some copyright-free tracks, some Very sound cool. loops, some motion templates. Sounds pretty good. Check it out, videoblocks.com forward slash drone. You also special thank you to our friends at Sharky for creating 100% all natural grass fed lamb jerky that doesn't have the chemicals. With four ingredients, it's simply better than beef. Wonderful. Get yours on Amazon, sharky.love. Going a little bit different direction today. We haven't been asked this before. Um, really about two things, I guess. One is the camera itself, and one is how to mount it, where so it can be mounted. For everyone who has no idea what Rob is talking about, because yeah. that is everyone. You haven't heard the question yet. <laughs> it's a good point, Rob. <laughs> uh, today, Today's podcast is going to be for you public safety officers, for you police officers. Notice I didn't say cops. For you... Emergency responders, EMS workers, people who are in the fire service. This is going to be something that may be really interesting to you. But also, if you're a private investigator, if you're mm. a lawyer, if you're a house inspector, if you're a mold inspector. Maybe a farmer. If you're a farmer. Or if you're a grow house operator. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever your job is, this <laughs> podcast is going to be important for you because you're going to know the no BS answer on whether the FLIR Duo is going to be a good camera for your operation. The FLIR Duo is a thermography camera. It's something that reads thermal radiation that emits from specific objects based on reflectivity and absorbance of light, a.k.a. heat radiation. The question is, with two small sensors, is it really enough to get the job done? And here to ask that question, Rob. Is Ken kind of, sort of, we'll just listen to the question. Go from there. How's that sound? Mm. Hey, Paul. Hey, Rob. Love the show. Kevin, New Jersey again. Just wanted to ask a question about the FLIR Duo and if it's mountable on only the Phantoms and that Altel drone, or do they make some kind of mounting system to put them on and inspire as well? Thanks. All right, Ken, thank you very much for the question, guys. Don't forget, if you have a question, go to askadroneu.com. Get that in. We'd love to hear from you. Haven't had any really... Uh, interesting accents in a while so hook us up give us some entertainment give us some beer and accents and <laughs> that's nordic of some sort <laughs> i was going german but german. whatever all right, you know. anyways. all right fleer duo rob tell us about it what are, what's your experience with it <laughs> i hate when you do that why i love when you do that that's exactly right <laughs> um actually to tell a story when i was uh when I was at the CES conference, FLIR was debuting the duo, and we actually had set up a time to meet with uh, their PR guy for whatever reason and go over this. Mm -hmm. um, and I said, I, oh, I, well, I want to record John McBride talking about this uh, in regards to drones. And they were like, no, you have to talk to our PR person. And I'm like, your PR person doesn't know anything about drones, though. Like, he's not... He knows cameras. He knows cameras, but he doesn't really know drones. Right. And they're like, no, you're going to have to go through RPR. And I was like, oh, well, no, I'm canceling the interview. <laughs> no. <laughs> Therefore, you have no information on drones. No, on that's the, not true. On the duo. No, um, but I can definitely give John's side after talking to him about this. It's, uh, it's, it's pretty clear. Um, who does this camera work for? Well, first of all, let's go over the camera specs just really quick because it may give you a better insight on who the camera is for if you understand the specs. So 
On the thermal side, there are two sensors on this GoPro-like camera. It will fit in any gimbal that is made to fit a GoPro. So if you're using the old H3 3D on a custom bird that you built with NASA V2, or whether you're flying a Sky Hero, a Phantom 2, or maybe one of the parrot birds that can fly a GoPro, whatever you're flying, as long as it can fly a GoPro, the FLIR Duo will work. And the reason is, is because of the ports that are on the FLIR Duo. Why is this camera powerful in the eyes of many? Simply, it's because of picture-in-picture with thermography and EO, or electro-optical images. That way you can change from one image to the other. But the thing is, is when you have that convenience, you're sacrificing sensor quality. So our sensor resolution on the thermal side is only 160 by 120 pixels, which gives us a spectral band of 7.5 to 13.5 UM. Or I'm, I, just, I just butchered that. I'm not even going to go back to it, though. Thermal frame rates at 7.5 hertz at NTSC or 8.3 hertz in PAL. So we're using NTSC, so that would be 7.5 hertz, which means it would have a very long time to recycle the camera. Mm-hmm. So if you were pointed at something really hot and it needed to change um, the margin of error, essentially the temperature it's seeing, the refresh rate would be very slow okay. at 7.5 frames. Um That being said, thermal measurement accuracy is plus or minus five degrees centigrade. What is, why don't you go ahead and Google five degrees centigrade into Fahrenheit? Five degrees centigrade. Hmm. Isn't it like you add 9.8 or something or like, I don't even know how the, the, I've got Siri for stuff like this. (laughs) Where's Siri when you need her? 41. 41 degree margin of error, Rob. Do you think this camera is accurate? It is to 41 degrees Fahrenheit. (laughs) (laughs) Even if you're looking for a person and it's 70 degrees outside and the body temperature is 98 degrees, that's a 20 temperature degree spread and there's a 40 degree margin of error. Well, so l- what could it be good for? I mean, it's a the, the nice thing is it's very compact. It's it is very only compact. $1,000, so it's not a very expensive thermal camera. There's got to be something that it is good for. Maybe it's just the conditions that you would have to use it in that you're alluding to. Um, I think that this camera would be really good for just roof inspectors, not not roof inspectors on a commercial grade. I mean, like if you were having your house assessed and we mm-hmm. need to know on a general sense, do we have a lot of leaks in the roof? Is there water in the roof? Yes or no. This is not for centimeter or inch grade detail on flying a commercial building's roof and trying to get ideas on where there are leaks and cracks and whatnot. This camera will not do that. There right. is not enough resolution. There is not enough accuracy. Um, it, it could work for maybe a rancher. Who wants to count the number of animals that he have? It would be perfect for that. In fact, um, having an inventory of your cattle or of your sheep, for mm-hmm. example, is very important um, and is something that cattlemen normally waste a lot of time doing. So this could be extremely, extremely useful for them. Because think about it. You could buy a Phantom 2 for $400. You can buy this camera for 1000 bucks or $1,400. bucks. you are going to need a screen and mm-hmm. you're going to need a good remote. Uh, because the old Phantom 2 has the old crappy remote. So you're looking at two grand for an entire thermal visual setup on your ranch. Yeah, not bad. That's less than a tire on a tractor. Right. Wow. I didn't know that. Oh, it depends on the size of the tractor. Sure. But and yeah. the age of the tire. True. Anyways, <laughs> so one of the things that uh, Ken asked specifically was, could it be mounted on an Inspire? Rob, do you have the answer to that? Well, we did find, just the same way that uh, yeah. Ken could have found, that there is a company that seems to have a gimbal that will do that for you. Something called Copter Safe. You're welcome, Copter Safe. Not that there's going to be a lot of people wanting to do this, but for those that do, we haven't tested this. We don't know a lot about it, but they are saying that they can do it. Yes. And what people say and what people can do are two very different things. And we don't know, we haven't tested this, but there is an option out there to yeah. use this setup on your Inspire. What about going to somebody like John? McBride, can he custom retrofit a drone for this, get you the gimbal and whatever yes. drone you want, essentially? Yes. Um, and in fact, uh, so John McBride, he is an instructor here at DroneU, but also owns Rocky Mountain Unmanned Systems. He is our go-to guy when it comes for thermal stuff. Any thermal classes, like the thermal class that's out now as a part of DroneU, if you remember, it's free. Yes, it's out there. Um, he did that class and he owns that store. He created multiple gimbals for the Tau 2, um, which is a little bit bigger. That's the thermal camera that's on my desk right now. Um, Mm -hmm. 
He created a Raptor gimbal for it, full 360 integration, full camera control, everything. So yes, he can right. develop anything that you want. Um, and I would take a Tau 2 with a Raptor gimbal over a FLIR Duo any day. Well, yeah, and you're talking about a lot more money mm -hmm. for something like that. I mean, what is that, a $10,000 camera? Yes. Mm -hmm. Plus the gimbal and all that setup, you're really getting some big dollars for something like you that. You are, but if you need to make regulatory grade decisions, you're going to need that accuracy. Yeah, but so you take something like this camera and you're probably not going to want to spend a lot of money customizing a gimbal and a drone for this particular camera. You're going to just put it on a Phantom 2. Yeah. And in fact, this would actually be really good for police officers who just need to put a Phantom up really quick. Maybe yeah. they're looking for a suspect and they just need something fast. Mm -hmm. This is going to be very, very fast, ready to go um, and very cheap for departments. If they don't want to spend 10 grand or 15 grand on an XT setup on an Inspire. Yeah, you're right. You know, this is a great thing for them. This is a great thing for ranchers. This is even a great thing for search and rescue on a very minute level. This is not going to be very good for search and rescue. It's not going to be the best option at, by any means. But if you are limited on resources and you need a basic thermal imaging camera from the sky, will this help you out? Yes. Just understand that the accuracy therein is not going to be very good. You're not going to be able to see through the trees. You know, you're not going to have the level of definition that you may see on thermal videos on the internet. Okay. So I just want to be really Some clear limitations with you need to be aware of and work around. Yeah. Yeah. Now there are two levels of the camera, just so people understand there's the FLIR duo and then the FLIR duo R. the FLIR duo R is a few hundred dollars more. And they're saying that the FLIR duo R is the world's first compact, lightweight radiometric thermal invisible light imager designed for professional drone application. The same size and shape as most popular action cameras, the duo R offers all the same features of the FLIR duo, like onboard recording, real time remote control of camera functions over PWM, but embeds accurate calibrated temperature measurements in every pixel of the thermal images for remote non-contact temperature measurements for your aerial platform. So this has the Lepton thermal sensor and it pairs this 160 by 120 thermal resolution with a two megapixel color and low light camera and operators can switch between them in flight, select the MSX blended imagery or view a picture in picture mode and record everything onto a micro SD card. What I really will say is that for tinkerers, the guys who like to build, I've built a few drones myself. Uh, in fact, now uh, that I have a little bit more time, which may be in May, uh, <laughs> uh, I really want to rebuild that Y6 with some huge ESCs just to make it bulletproof, you mm -hmm. know, and put a NASA flight controller, screw that 3DR crap, get it out of Ouch. there, um, and then rebuild this thing. Because you could, we could have the Y6 made for just this. Be pretty cool. Yeah, because you would get 30 minutes of flight time, the thermal, and be able to go well over 100 miles an hour. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you never know when you're going to need to film a car chase, okay? <laughs> that, with a thermal camera. <laughs> Make sure there are live people driving the car. Okay, so when would you do that? Let's say we're making a wartime movie, and we want to show an aircraft kind of departing down, and a drone that's targeting the aircraft, and a missile that's going into it. If we flew a drone in FPV mode so that the camera actually actually rolled with the drone and then looked like we were rolling into a building or rolling into a plane. It would look like a missile's heat sinking image. And then you could overlay a HUD and now you've got that. Wow. Mr. Director over here. Just saying. Just directed a scene. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> I'm just, hey, you know, creativity is, is limitless, right? It's it just is. all That's about true. how you use things, which I quickly realized I made that video for the, um, in the Freedom Journal group, we've been calling car dealerships together and I made a video and put it together. What I should have done is made a video of the actual output deliverable commercial, the 30 second thing people are used to seeing. Mm -hmm. They're not used to seeing a bunch of shots of the dealership. It's boring to them. And, but they cannot comprehend that I can take those long shots, cut them all together and make a commercial. Right. So now I'm going to make a little 30 second commercial so they can all visualize it because people are really creativity limited and you got to understand everything is possible. And as soon as you open your mind to that, I think a lot is possible. Said by somebody who this stuff comes very easy to, <laughs> but that's okay. And it might it's come fun. easier to you if you go to Denver. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I suppose that's possible. Yeah. Not for the being a mile up in the air, right? No, no, no. No, no, no. I, you could go to Washington too. Yeah. Washington that's State. That's the other one. Are the, mm -hmm. Who else? Nevada. 
No, really? Of course, Nevada. They should have been first. Arizona? Arizona? I didn't know that. I'm sure we're not very far behind. There's too much money in it. Oh, man. Anyway, <laughs> getting off subject, <laughs> is the FLIR Duo right for you? In most instances, you're going to get much better accuracy, much better data, and much better deliverables out of a different setup. But if you're using this for purely search and rescue, you're using this for maybe shooting some production stuff, and you want some thermal footage just to get that cool look, you can't really find a better deal than the FLIR Duo. So depending on your application it is really dependent on the usability of this. If you're a farmer and you need to count your cattle in the morning, you couldn't find a better solution than this camera right here. In terms of cost effectiveness is yes. what you're saying. Yeah. So Will, is the FLIR Duo a usable thermal imager? It depends on the use case. But anyway, if you know a farmer, if you know someone who's in roof inspections, if you know someone who is in home inspections and appraisals, share this podcast with them. It may help them out. It also may help someone get a safer, cleaner house. Imagine this. If an appraiser or a house inspector had a drone with a thermal imager, they may be able to see mold in the house. And if someone is mold sensitive, guess what? It could save them a lifetime or years of being unhealthy and not knowing why. So by you sharing this podcast, you could actually have an effect on someone's health. Did I go down a rabbit hole to explain that? Maybe. Is it possible? <laughs> Absolutely. Awesome. On that bombshell, that's going to do it for us today. My name is Paul. My name is Rob. And the caffeine has kicked in. Uh-oh. Ask Drone you. <laughs>